would you say you have some kind of a photographic memory a little bit or no? No, 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 at no not at all. Not at all. So all these no. books, you're, are you the kind that you can say page 73, no. 70? No, I don't organize myself okay. that way. I, usually before a lecture, I'll, and this is the hard part, and I can do a lecture without doing this, but it's better if I do this. This is the hard part. Mm -hmm. I'll sit down for 20 minutes with my eyes closed, and I figure out what the, what the central topic is. So there's always a question. What's the question I'm trying to address in this lecture? And then I'll figure out a pathway through it. It's like, okay, well, here's the argument. Here's point one, here's point two, here's point three. And there's possible branches off those. And then with each point, I usually have a collection of stories and facts that I can use to make the point and, and to buttress it and to make it interesting. And so it, it's kind of like this technique called memory castle that people have used for centuries to remember things. And so what you do is you, you sit and you, you imagine a, might be a place that you know, like a, lit, a geographic place, a house. And then you can place the things that you remember. Imagine you walk through the house, you can place the things that you want to remember at different locations in the house. Mm -hmm. But you have, to, you have to turn what you're remembering into an image. And then you can walk through the house and, and you can lift things up and find what it is that you're trying to remember. I sort of do that with this theory. I know the story and I know its branches and I keep adding to it and adding to it and shifting pieces around from time to time. And so that's how I remember things. And this is also a very useful hint for studying. Like if you're studying and you have to remember, what you want to do is study and then you want to write down what you just learned. So you read a paragraph, you close the book and you write down what you remember or you read a chapter and you close the book and you write down what you remember, or at least you sit there and you try to remember because the way you remember is by practicing remembering. Okay, so if you're reading and you want to use it in conversation and you have to think about what you read, you have to put it in your own words. It's often helpful to close the book and write it down or to associate it with some problem that you're uh, currently trying to solve. You have to take the knowledge and make it your own. And then and then that alters the structure through which you look at the world. And that changes the way that you think so that when you have a conversation, the next time that you're going to have the conversation in a different way. So merely reading isn't enough. You have, you have to read and think and recall. And it's the act of recalling that produces the remembering. And it's that act of remembering that puts that material at hand for you. One of the things that I would recommend that you do as students um, in this course, and, and maybe in every course, speaking of industriousness, is come up with a plan of attack for the course and use a scheduler. You know, if you treat your university career like a full-time job, you're much more likely to succeed. So, for example, if you sat down today or tomorrow for a couple of hours, three hours, and you filled in a Google Calendar, whatever you happen to use with a, a strategy for studying, and a list of when all your assignments are due and all of that, and when you're going to sit down and study, then you won't be in a position where you have to cram for 10 hours a day hopelessly right before, you know, an important exam. It's also a very ineffective way of studying, by the way. I mean, first of all, people who cram for 10 hours say they're studying for 10 hours, but they rarely are because, well, I can't study for 10 hours. I don't have the power of concentration that would enable me to do that for that prolonged period of time. I can manage about three hours of intense intellectual activity before I'm pretty done. And it's also the case that if you study and then sleep and then study and then sleep and then study and then sleep, you space it out, then you're much more likely to remember. You're much more likely to remember if you try to recall the material. And so highlighting and that sort of thing isn't very useful. But reading, closing the book, summarizing what you've read without opening the damn book, that's useful.